this is Abina at Cross Keys Crafts. Today with a little bonus video because it will be really really short. I just created a card. I needed a quick card for tomorrow and I thought rather than putting the camera on I just quickly prepare it and then I realised afterwards it's so easy I might just as well record the process after all. So this is what I have created. This is a stepper card and it really just consists of two pieces of uh, pattern cardstock and then I had these toppers you've seen them before they are from the zodiac pack I'm not sure it's still available a few months back I created a few cards with these and all I've done with these three toppers is I've backed them on some cardstock and then just stuck them down so because I only need one Zodiac card, I thought I'd show you this technique with a different um, pattern uh, pa paper pack or paper pad. This is called the 12 Days of Christmas. I bought this fairly cheaply from the RK Crafts, I believe. If this is still available, I'm going to link to it below. The good thing about this is got pattern cardstock. Some of it has got some linen texture other has got lots of foiling but it also has got these toppers in here so I don't really need to think about what I put on there so I will quickly off camera choose my background pa background papers I will choose two of these some by the way in the pack are double-sided some are plain it doesn't really matter what you use um, although if I just show you this one again you can just a little bit we'll see the other side in the background here but I'm not bothered about that because I like how colorful it is so as I said I'll quickly choose these off camera and then I'll show you what we do I have picked my two toppers I have picked the partridge in a pear tree just because I quite liked the pattern paper and I wanted some contrasting pattern paper, but the one that fits colour-wise, so I went for this one here. It doesn't really matter, it's really all what you fancy. So, but rather than just cutting it out like this, I'm going to leave some of the blue trim. And I'm just really just using my scissors. I'm not bothered about getting any dyes out and find something matching. This is all about it really being very simple and easy and if I feel like it and should get mad again this year as I did last year I might even make some of these cards to give away to a care home again I'm not quite sure with this one here I don't know if the camera picks it up it seems to have some sort of tag shape on, on there but I'm not bothered about that I will just cut this off so just cutting this straight it's got some rounded corners on the paper and i think i will add those again a bit wonky there but it doesn't matter so if you wanted to you could get your guillotine out for that but I'm not bothered. But I will quickly get my corner rounder just to mimic the corners that are printed on here. I've got this We Are Memory Keepers corner rounder. It's got three different sizes. I'm just going in with a 17 millimeters. But I like to go in from the back to make sure I have actually slot this in properly. Otherwise, I always struggle a little bit. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this down on some gold cardstock and then cut around that. And I'm leaving this all in real time so you can see how quickly that can be done. This is just some scrap card stock. I could have chosen a proper mirror card. This is more like a matte gold I just grabbed this as quickly as I could from my stash and I like the fact that it mimics the gold on here a little bit and just brings in a new dimension as before just cutting it out with my scissors it's 
Sometimes using your scissors is just as quick as getting a guillotine out or a trimmer, especially if you've got small bits like this. So it can be a bit of a nightmare as well. So this time I think I'm going in with a shorter round. So I'm going in with the 40 millimeters, am I? No, that looks awkward, staying with a 17. See, I can see now, sometimes if you don't, if you have a cut stripe, it can look awkward. Needs tidying up a little bit. Not grabbing, doesn't matter. As I said, we didn't want to fuss. So I'm just shoving this all to the side as I do, and it will still be there in three days' time. I know that, because I'm not very good at tidying at the moment. So, for the extra card pieces, I've got my scoreboard here. Let me just lift my camera. I normally zoom in, but I had another project the other day and I lowered my camera. I haven't put it back up yet. As I said, all in real time today. So, this piece of card is... I'll just think which way around it is... It is seven inches wide and eight inches, sorry, eight inches here in length. Um, this is important that you get the length and the um, width right. I think it's this way around. Maybe it doesn't matter with this cardstock. If you have a directional paper, make sure it's seven inches wide and eight inches long. So we're turning it over to the eight inch side and we're scoring this at two, four, and six. And then the other piece, this is, oh, sorry, I've forgotten to mention that, this is 10 inches long, and I picked three and a half inches here with the other card because the topper was wider for the other bit i just had it at three and one quarter this is really up to you i just chose three and a half because it's half of seven and this gets scored at five inches so in the end we will end up with a five by seven card base so i'm just popping this away so all we need to do is Fold this bit here, burnish it, and with this one we're creating a valley, mountain, valley fold. And that's all there is to this card, really. So I'm just folding it. Haven't even folded it properly. I realised recently I've been saying my scoreboard is a bit funny. I think also because the cardstock expands when you do the scoring i think sometimes that's why it's a bit wonky so you can then choose which side you want on the front and this one is important that you've got the bit where the cardstock is the right way around if you've got a directional pattern like i have here put that on the front and have the bit that is upside down on the back and you can choose whether you want this on the side this is what i did with my card you might want this in the middle and have smaller toppers it's really up to you and i just need to decide which topper i want on where i think i want this one here with a partridge on the partridge cardstock and then i can put this topper here with the other card let me just bring that in again i put just a little bit in the front here and had the bigger topper at the back I preferred this because when it stands up both you know uh, the recipient can see both but this with this one here I think I will just glue it on the front so I like to glue these down before I glue this part onto the cardstock there so just adding some glue I think I left the tube open, it's a bit funny there. So I'll have a look whether I want this. I think I move it a little bit lower because then I can still see the partridge there then. 
and at a later date I might add some sequins in gold or some nouveau drops it's just I want to keep the video short today so as I said you can decide which side you want to use the back or front if you've got a non-directional paper it doesn't really matter because most of it will be covered anyway except for the back so I think I'll just leave it like this so I'm now going to put glue here at the bottom and this you can mark it with a pencil I need to go as high as this width is so two inches I don't want to go any higher there I'm laying this sideways that's easier I'm placing this down and pressing it down you can also open it up here and press it from this side so and then you fold this back and you put glue on two inches on this side again I think I will actually have a look what two inches are these are two inches here so four squares I'm going a bit below because I don't want this to ooze out So, and then I'm folding this over and pop it here on the back. You want this to fold flat, so even if it is a little bit out, let me just zoom in if you can see that, it doesn't matter, as long as it folds flat here. You don't want to pull too much, because then it might not fold flat in the envelope. Or you could pull it down and reinforce the score line if you find you need to make some adjustments there getting conscious that I'm talking too fast so that's the first step of there and then this one as I said can just be added here I'm now contemplating whether I actually want it on the back panel and then have something small there I think I will actually do that so you didn't have to enforce this by the way but I just like the gold trim around this I don't know if I said that would um, strength the cardstock is. I'll check that in a moment. This one, I just need to check whether that is just about the width of that piece there. That is lucky. You don't want that to be much wider. Just making sure it's straight. You could have it wider and then have a wider envelope, but you don't want it to catch here. So I'm just pressing that down. It's a bit difficult to show how it sits so this actually leans backwards and has a different angle to the other one I would quickly find an embellishment here for the front just to show you what the card will look like finished so I've got an idea what I would like to put there because I've got the poinsettias in the background I'd like to put one of my die cut poinsettias here but I cannot find my stash at the moment. I've got some already die cut. So I will add that at a later point because I need to be at work in about 15 minutes. Work means just downstairs in the pub. So I just wanted to show you the technique of creating this card and show you how quick it is. So once I've found my embellishment, I will stick it on there and show you the finished card in a little snippet at the end of this video. But yeah, if you like this idea, and how quickly you can create create cards from paper packs uh, it's lovely i think for uh, to display your pattern cardstock and use them up really quickly yeah and if you like this idea you might want to give me a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more of what i'm creating you might want to subscribe to my channel i'd be very happy about that and i'll see you soon with another video